Welcome to Walk Like You Talk TV. I'm your host. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Good morning, all. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday. First of all, like I always try to do now, is um, I like to tell the Lord to have a beautiful day. Even though he makes the day, he makes the night. It's his. It belongs to him. But I still want to pay that homage and let him know as a friend, as I would tell any other friend, to have a beautiful day today. So, my subject is, and normally I rush and try to get off, um, but we'll see today. I, I will definitely still not try to hold you long. But my subject has to deal with um, this particular quote or meme I'm seeing lately. And I'm really talking to the Christians because I can really, I'm not really concerned what the world does. I mean, my job is to still um, talk to them, uh, share my story, share my testimony share um, the gospel with them but for them I expect them to do this but for the Christians that I see and I've seen pastors doing this not my pastor but I've seen pastors doing this I've seen a lot of people in the body of Christ or you know claim the body of Christ uh, quote this and I don't know if they are really recognizing what it really means so what it is is that there's this thing that goes around I'm sure everybody's seen it where it's like, you know, they forgive you, but like they don't have to, um, the connection, they don't have to connect with you. I'm saying, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but it goes something in lines like that. Like, um, they still don't have to connect with you, uh, to have a connection with you and things like that. Basically is what they're saying. I wish I had it word for word and that's kind of my mistake, but, um, you understand what I'm saying. You know, it's no different than, you know, I forgive you, but um, I'll never forget. Or, you know, basically, I forgive you, but I am not. I don't have to fool with you. You know, I can love you from a distance or something like that. So it's really in lines with that, right? So my issue with that, and especially with the Christians, is that I understand. First of all, let me say this. I used to be that person. Let me say that. that that's the first way to deal with this, is I used to be that person. And I used to think that same way and my mentality was the same way and here's the really cold fact of it one day you're going to look up and because you're not perfect and you make mistakes and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to continually make mistakes you're going to make this mistake and you're going to say or wish that someone would forgive you and that someone would forget your sin or offense. That's going to happen to you one day. If you have this notion or attitude that this is okay to carry this out. The second thing is, is that that's not forgiveness. I've talked about this before, but that's not forgiveness. And the reason why I say that is because I get it. You know, there's some people who really can, they don't have the intentions of really being sorry or having a real repentant heart when it comes down to it. So I get it. You know, and I'm not saying that you have to kiss anybody's behind or do any of that type of stuff. What I'm saying is, is that when someone truly comes to you and they say, I'm sorry for the offense I caused you, you know, and they really want another chance with you. You should be quick to forgive because God has forgiven you and God has given you how many chances like his grace Upon you through the things you've done, how many chances has he, has he given you grace? So, like, it's okay for you to take his grace, but it's not okay for you to give that same grace to someone else who probably is really, really sorrowful and repentful for what they did to you. But it's, it's, it's okay for you not to give that back to them which is what one of the main things God has spoke about when he speaks about judgment. And I'm just like, 
I can't relate. I really can't relate. And like I said, I've gone through the experience myself. I used to be that person who think that way. And then I think about Jesus and I think about Peter. You know, I think about Thomas. I think about these people and I'm just like, I mean, really anyone in the Bible, really, you know, and it's like, wow, Peter was like, I'm going to ride and die for you, Jesus. I ain't leaving your side. And Jesus told him like, dude, <laughs> you're going to deny me three times. And when it became, when it got to the third time, he looked at him, was like, mm-hmm. Like, he didn't have to say anything. He just looked at him like, mm-hmm. Remember what I told you? He didn't have to say a word. His his face expression showed everything. And Peter remembered exactly what Jesus had said. But guess what? We would have cut Peter off. We would have been like, I ain't fooling with you, Peter. I'm up here. I'm going through this and that. I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for everybody. And this is how you treat me. This is what you do to me. I had to forgive you because you you sitting up here trying to, you know, I understood what you was trying to do. But, you know, I'm going through this mission. You know, the mission I'm on. You cutting people's ears off. You doing this and that. You 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 denying me. You doing you, you running with the people that was against me, denying me. You know what I'm saying? Like. But guess what he did? <laughs> he accepted Peter. He completely forgave Peter. So Peter to go as far as to say Peter did one of the first the first most important things. He was the one that on Pentecost, you know, gave the biggest deliverance speeches we've seen. So he used Peter. So don't think that God can't use the person that offended you. I'm sorry this has went over time a little bit, but it's a very sensitive subject because this doesn't draw us closer to God. This draws us away. You never know who you're chasing away because of mistakes. People do learn from mistakes. People grow from mistakes. People become the best they've ever been after mistakes. A lot of times that's what it takes. And it may be hard to take that in. It may be hard to accept that. But sometimes in life with different people, that's what it takes. You may not be that way. It may not take you that way to get on board the way you need to be. And I respect that. I have nothing against that. What I'm saying is other people, it do. So you have to have that same kind of compassion, that same kind of just, that's why forgiveness, that's why love, that's why faith, that's why forgiveness and compassions are the most, the most important things you hear in the Bible over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because this is what God wants us to really attach to. So I just say, you know, don't get caught up with these little fancy little cliches and stuff like that. And, and, you know, and, and pushing them out there like this stuff is cool. It's not God would never do that. And if we're emulating God, trying to be exactly like him and following him, then why are we doing that? Why do we think that's okay to say that, to feel that way, to react that way? Why would we think that's okay? Because he wouldn't do that. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. So let's start with that and let's really give people chances. Okay, I know people bump their heads and they do things because they're not perfect and you're not perfect, but God loves them all. He loves you and he loves them. And a lot of times we may be missing out on a blessing, a real true blessing, because we don't want to forgive them because we don't operate like that. But we operate in other ways and maybe that that person don't. And maybe they are healed better in that area. But we don't look at it like that sometimes. And I think that we need to. I gave the story about uh, Onesimus and uh, Philemon and, you know, how he how Paul was like, look, you may have lost him for a little while, 
but now you have gained him forever. Those that's powerful. That is powerful. If you really look at that story, please read Philemon. It's only one chapter. Please read it. Just read it. Just read that story and understand the importance of forgiveness and what Philemon was on with, or excuse me, with uh, Onesimus was on with Philemon and how uh, Onesimus changed his life for the better, even though he did whatever, foul acts before that, but how he was useful to the kingdom after he learned, after he bumped his head the hard way. All right. So I love you guys. I just wanted to share that. I think it's very important. I pray that it blesses you. I pray that it helps you. I pray that it takes you to the next level. And I pray that it just helps. It gives you forgiveness for people who may have hurt you. The ones that I'm talking about who are really sorry, who are sorrowful for what they've done to you. Okay. So I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. You have a wonderful Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and peace.